if the average Kiwi exists, she probably is a woman in her 40s, is probably called Sarah, probably lives in Auckland, and knows at least one person that has suffered due to the consequences of a disease called cancer. Cancer. The word itself makes many of us uncomfortable, and rightly so. It is New Zealand's biggest killer. We have the second worst rates for new diagnoses. We're the worst place to be if you want to avoid leukemia, and the worst place to be if you're diagnosed with skin cancer. Now, different people may point to different reasons for why that is, but one of the biggest reasons for this is the complex nature of cancer itself. You see, cancer isn't just a set thing. It isn't a microbe that can be killed off. It's an uncontrolled growth of harmful cells that happens due to many reasons. Reasons that are unique to the person's lifestyle or reasons that are frankly unknown. This has made it hard to pinpoint cancer and so we've had to take all out guns blazing approaches to kill cancer. We've had to use treatments like chemotherapy and radiation therapy that also often harm healthy cells in the process. An approach that scientists have taken to isolate the attacks on cancer is of immunotherapy. Immunotherapy focuses on using the immune system to fight cancer. The idea of fighting disease using our immune system isn't all that new. In fact, I'd expect most of us to have already undergone some form of immunotherapy in the past, that is through a vaccine. But when it comes to cancer, due to its complex nature, immunotherapy takes a slightly different form. One of these forms is of CAR T cell therapy. In CAR T cell therapy, a special type of killer immune cells known as T cells are removed from the person's body. Then using tools such as CRISPR, the T cells are programmed with receptors that can identify and kill the patient's cancer. These cells are cloned in a lab, replicated and re-injected in the patient, where they hunt down and kill the cancerous cells. This method is still somewhat new, but has shown some very high remission rates, with hundreds of clinical trials being run around the world. In a trial conducted in 2017 by the American Society of Clinical Oncology, 94% of patients suffering from multiple myeloma went into remission thanks to CAR T cell therapy. But since each cancer is unique, receptors have to be tailored specifically to the patient's cancer. And we haven't quite identified a good receptor target for each type and subtype of cancer, making the process expensive and inefficient from a public health perspective. Currently, CAR T therapies are also only doing really well with blood cancers, whilst they're still struggling with other tumorous cancer types. However, a recent discovery made earlier this, year's, this year by researchers at Cardiff University seems to make these problems non-existent. In news that sounds too good to be true, researchers have discovered a T-cell that managed to kill multiple different types of cancer. Lung, bone, colon, breast, skin, these killer cells killed every type of cancers that researchers tried without requiring any type-specific programming. On top of that, it left the non-cancerous cells untouched. This meant that these T cells used a receptor target that is not specific to a single cancer type. By doing further experiments, scientists identified this to be MR1. MR1 is a protein found on all our cells and is a sort of sampling site for the immune system where it samples molecules from the inside of the cell and presents them on the outside for the immune system to have a look. Now, we have previously experimented with T cells that interact with MR1, but those were nowhere near as good at targeting cancer as these newly discovered cells. Another thing that is unique about MR1 proteins is that they don't really differ amongst the population, which meant that when that receptor was engineered into T cells of actual cancer patients, it not only destroyed tumors from that specific patient, but it also killed cancers from other patients. This is big news. These results highlight the potential of MR1 targeting T cells 
adding a degree of universality amongst cancer treatments, putting us one step closer to a one-size-fits-all therapy for cancer. Not only that, it would change the status quo within cancer therapies. If this plays up to its potential, it's not unrealistic to expect mass-produced supercharged T-cells that are readily available to be the new way of treating many forms of cancer. Another advantage of CAR T-cell therapies over the likes of chemotherapy are that CAR T-cell uh, CAR T therapy is live medicine that can multiply as much as it needs inside the patient, requiring only one infusion compared to drugs that wear out and need to be re-injected multiple times. And in an even longer time horizon, many immunologists believe that success with CAR T cell therapy will eventually lead to a long sought after cancer vaccine. Having said that, this discovery does not mean that we have won the fight against cancer. Although results from the lab and in mice were promising, there is still a long way to go before we can conduct human trials. We don't exactly know how this receptor identifies MR1, neither do we know what exactly it is that MR1 samples to communicate with the T cells. These concepts and mechanisms that these are concepts and mechanisms that need to be understood thoroughly to investigate the suitability and safety of the treatment and hence are crucial to the progression of this discovery. There's also another issue with this therapy, a more New Zealand specific one, but I'll come back to addressing that. The good news is that New Zealand doesn't need to start from scratch when it comes to CAR T cell therapy. In 2019, the Malacan Institute for Medical Research based in Wellington started a phase one CAR T cell therapy trial. And although they're using different receptor targets in their trials, the underlying therapy is the same. The learnings from this study with no, will no doubt be useful down the line with MR1, targeting receptors. And since we already have expert in the, experts in the country, I think New Zealand should actively invest resources in further researching MR1-based receptors for CAR T cell immunotherapy. The potential positives for harnessing this breakthrough are enormous to New Zealand. Mass-produced T-cells that work for most of the population have an obvious commercial case to be made for them. We save money on the more than $500 million per annum of cancer-related spending, and we also have the opportunity of exporting technology and intellectual property, helping Kiwis improve their financial well-being. However, I'd like to put more of the weight on the invaluable social benefits of this breakthrough. A more effective therapy would translate to better survival rates and would undoubtedly improve many Kiwis' emotional and mental well-being, making a healthier, longer living and hence more productive population. A reliable cancer therapy would also help us focus our resources on other much deserving areas of health, such as equity of access. It would help us get to a future where being Māori will not make you twice as likely to die of cancer and a future where the quality of treatment available in a rural hospital is the same as its urban counterpart. I believe the potential implications of MR1-based immunotherapy fit right into Sir Paul's vision for the future of New Zealand. It allows us to build economic and social wealth while improving well-being by using science, technology, and intellectual property. And by being a treatment for one of New Zealand's four main non-communicable diseases, it also addresses one of, our, uh, one of our national science challenges of healthier lives. Actually, it goes further than that. I think it fits with most Kiwis' visions for the future of New Zealand. You'd be hard pressed to find a Kiwi that disregards the importance of fighting cancer. But you may find Kiwis that are against genetic modification. Which brings me to the New Zealand specific issue that I talked about earlier. The T cells must be genetically engineered with appropriate receptors by using tools such as CRISPR-Cas9 to turn them into cancer killing machines. And for mass produced T cells, 
They must be engineered so that they don't reject the new body and start attacking healthy cells. This necessity of genetic modification may turn many people off, but I think we ought to re-examine our stance on this. The truth is that the set of facts that we are privy to today are very different to what they were 25 year years ago. We know a lot more about gene editing now, and it's about time that we had a robust and informed debate about the future of genetic modification in New Zealand. Not only for advancements in CAR T cell therapy, but, the but for the implications it can have on areas other to healthcare, such as conservation. The way I look at this discovery is perfectly summarized by the Matauranga Maori in this Fakatauki. Mate huruhuru, karerete manu. Adorn the bird with feathers so it may fly. I see MR1 based T cell therapy as a tool that can help adorn New Zealand with uh, New Zealanders with the feathers of longevity, strength, and well being, allowing us to fly high. So, I say, let's get to it. Let's make the choice to utilize talent we already have and explore new ideas that may require some changes to our thinking, but will ultimately be solutions for issues that we have long faced. Let's lead ourselves to new frontiers. Let's end cancer.